Okay, here we go. I'm back. It's your boy Bosky. <laughs> nah, seriously though. Um, last week was really fun. On Saturday, I had the opportunity to attend Revu's fashion show. It's pretty cool. A fashion designer is Rel Green. She's up and coming, new to the game. She has some very beautiful pieces. I was actually uh, fortunate, right? Because she actually reached out to me. Uh, she personally DM'd me to invite me to come to the show. Um, I thought that was kind of cool. I put my girlfriend with me who always attends fashion shows. I'm usually, the last couple of years I've been to a couple of dope um, show. I believe last year I went to Oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't last year, it was actually pre-pandemic, uh, it was 2019. I think I went to one put together by uh, Pink. So yeah, it was pretty dope. Uh, had a good time, there were vendors there. Um, I decided to bring my camera and capture some footage. You know, I was just gonna just throw some clips up on IG, but then I, I decided um, to just put a video together which I already uploaded. It's the video previously before this. So if you just go to my channel, yeah, you can check that video out. I'll probably post some clips starting now, <laughs> possibly, I don't know. But yeah, let me talk a little bit about uh, Rao. Her story is amazing. She came here, she went to LIU Brooklyn. Um, she's doing wonderful things. And uh, she's definitely a dreamer. Side note, that's what her company brand name means, right? Um, I think it's either Dreamer or Dreamy. Probably both. It's French. <laughs> Look it up. You can Google it, right? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, yeah, we had a good time. It was fun. Uh, she had performances by a couple of artists. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the video, right? So the video I put together wasn't, <clears throat> it was just uh, me just bringing my camera along for the trip. Uh, I suggest if you're going to events and you're allowed to bring your camera, always carry a light source. That's very important. Uh, for this, I, I brought a light source, but I didn't I didn't really use it too much because I was trying to be mindful that I didn't distract from the show. Plus, I wasn't like it wasn't really like a, one of my gigs that I go out and shoot. It was just like, Yo, I'm just gonna bring my camera and capture stuff. And who knows? Um, um, especially since I'm glad I did because I believe it was for first fashion show one and also she threw it for her birthday so um i was like oh i'll put i'll just put something together and hopefully i can like introduce people to her brand first before it just goes into like the the show itself um a couple of side notes for people that shoot event work um you guys are good i've done a lot of events before so uh, some of the techniques that I have, um, it's really it's really in the editing, I believe, like to bring it out and stuff. But personally, I, I like if if this was like a regular event that I was just going to, I probably instead of having my camera on a cage, I probably would have put it on like stabilizer. That way, I would have got more scenic, stabilized shots, this, things of that nature or whatnot. Um, that's the thing about these mirrorless and DSLR cameras. It's not the same as like a camcorder, so. It's like the image stabilization is okay, but you know, unless you have like a cord or a strap that you can use that comes with any of the cameras, which I did not have on the cage, um, sometimes the movements can be really, really shaky. And I don't have the best control with my hands in terms of that. So yeah, but at the end of the day, I, just, um, I was just there uh, to just um, have fun and enjoy the night, which I ultimately did. Uh, my girlfriend, Shanae, had fun too. It was kind of cool, but she's used to like going out to like different fashion shows all over the, the city and stuff. I believe last uh, two years ago before the pandemic, she went to one where she got to meet uh, Tori Birch, right? And Google who that is if you don't know, <laughs> you know, but just know that she got to ask questions and speak to a billionaire. Yeah, Google her. <laughs> but anyway, aside from that, I'm back to Ralph. So Ralph's up and coming. She's great. She's also a stylist and not just that, she's also a creative director. Yeah, she's up and coming. She has some creative ideas. I've seen some of the campaigns and the marketing that she's put on her page specifically, you know, to market our products and stuff. And yeah, she has talent, she has drive, she has like ideas. 
Uh, so it's cool. Hopefully one day I can just work, we can work together in that capacity. I believe we will. So I don't want to say stay tuned for that, but stay tuned for that. <laughs> yeah, I just think um, I just have some creative ideas. I think that would uh, mess well with her stream brand and whatnot. But who knows? You know what I mean? Like I'm someone who uh, values uh, creative people who also take the initiative to use that creativity and put it into their own craftsmanship. Meaning like sometimes as a videographer, sometimes my job is to um, help you create the vision that's inside your head, right? Or my client's head and stuff like that. And that's the difference between sometimes, like I said, being a videographer, but no, technically it's the difference between being a videographer and a content creator or a creative director, right? Where it's like, those are the distinct separations where a videographer is usually called upon to like shoot the event, capture the th event, things in the moment, document the day, things of that nature. And the creative director is like putting everything together, right? Creating the whole process, um, like in charge of the whole direction, the process and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Some, some cinematography aspects in it, some directorial aspects in it, a lot of creativity. You get the point. Um, yeah. So yeah, we have fun. I uh, can't wait to see more from her, her line, which I believe is dropping soon. Um, I also gifted her the video, you know, um, it's very important. I think when you uh, do stuff for the first time, like she has, that it'll be cool to have like a video that actually highlights your event for like, you know, 10 years from now, 20 years from now stuff. That's kind of cool. I think that's person kind of cool. Right. But yeah, shout outs to her. Shout outs to me for attending uh, the lab. Uh, if, if you know me, uh, I just been busy shooting content for clients and I usually don't leave the crib unless it's like I'm going somewhere um, to like capture footage or like I got work or something like that. Yeah, because the pandemic, I just been keeping away from people. It's just not my style, not my vibe. I'm more of a like homebody type individual. Uh, if I'm out and about, it's generally with my girlfriend, you know. But um, you know, I guess sometimes you have to like get some use cases so she can put that bad, beautiful LV bag to use. You know what I'm saying? She, she she's stunning. The girl's always stunning. Shanae, you got it. I don't know. The bag's fire, by the way. I'm not gonna put it in front of the camera because I don't really like touching touching her bags and stuff like that. Like she's mad anal and stuff with, with her, like Louis her Chanel and all that stuff, you know. I, she's too high fashion, but I, lo I love her for it. You know, I'm more techie. So, you know, I'll spend I'll spend money on my cameras, on my gear and things of that nature. Um, I do wear clothes that support uh, people I know. I am gonna cop some some gear from, from Rel and stuff. So I'm just waiting. I want a couple of sweaters, but when I went online, I, I didn't really see um, the ones that I'm looking for, but you know, uh, it's coming and stuff. I kind of like her hats. Maybe I have a thing going with all these like dad hats slash trucker hats that I've been wearing and stuff. So I might cop one. Is this, I want one that just says a company name and keep it pushing. I'm not really a, 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 a what is it, a globe type? type of person i believe she has one with the globe but it's still fire though it's still fresh just for me i just i'm more like i like either one symbol like this like you know to the noobs right or um symbols like 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 all the name of the company and then keep it pushing and stuff but big globe and all that stuff just uh it's too loud for me i like to keep things muted right um although this color combination is is what it is right the event was fun Definitely had a great time. It was a good, wonderful experience. And I'm um, looking forward to seeing her have more shows. Um, now, in terms of the editing um, of the show and actually quality of the show, a couple of things, right? The image quality could have been better on, on my end. It's just that, like I said, like um, Sony's, well, I, I was shooting on the A7 III. Sony shoot really well on low light. However, I had to bump up the ISO to like 6400. 
Um, and that's why it introduced some green and whatnot. But at the end of the day, it's like, for me, it's like, I didn't want to take away from the show because I wasn't contracted to shoot. If I was contracted to shoot, I'd have made a couple of adjustments and stuff to the environment so that way I could have had like a crispier picture, especially when you're doing shoots um, that are like, like that, right? When there's a venue spot, there's a venue spot and usually uh, the people put on the show is like up and coming um, people, like the, the setups and everything is going to be totally different than like a big, big hype and production. It just, it is what it is. So sometimes with lighting, you just have to account for certain, certain things, right? Or um, pre-plan it, pre-plan it out. This was just run and gun shoot. So anyway, my ISO is on 6400. Um, I still like, I like the images for what it, what it was. Um, I try to keep my, I was using a Tamron 2875. So like aperture, on that is two point lowest is 2.8 so it was kind of tough trying to get a lot of things in focus because it wasn't really any light source and i had to keep it at the 2.8 i couldn't bump it up anymore the a7 III does not shoot in 4k 60 it only shoots 4k 30 30 frames per second also 4k 24 frames per second so i knew i didn't want to shoot at 24 frames per second because then uh i didn't I didn't feel like this was a situation to go handheld and try to have cinematic looking shots when I knew I was gonna be moving my arms left and right, up and down and all, in all different directions and stuff like that. So like I chose 4K 30, um, but then the issue there with handheld, again, it's like, it's not smooth. <laughs> you still have to be mindful and conscious. So there's gonna be a lot of jittery movements and stuff, especially since I had it on the cage and I ain't really, in my cage, I don't really have two handles, which I'm probably gonna get, just so I can add a little bit more, um, uh, have a little bit more control on the ends and whatnot. But yeah, man, like, aside from that, for run and gun, it was pretty cool. Editing of the video, I wanted to just create a really cool intro leading into the show itself, and then end it with her um, speaking about her journey, because I think that's very important. It's not often, that you get to see the pure joy um, and yeah, the, the pure joy from someone putting something together, right? Having an event that also gave opportunity to people to make money by selling their items there and also put the next generation of artists to perform and like MCs to perform. And I thought that was like really, 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 really fire. Excuse my language. It was just a, uh, time in brooklyn on a saturday night what else you got you know what i'm saying what else there to do i mean anyway i'm looking forward to more stuff from her i still don't know what direction i want to take this youtube channel into but i do know that i'm going to show i'm going to show my process in which i shoot in terms of like out and about some bts or shooting from live seeds and whatnot i think that's more important uh so you guys can um, come along for the journey with me as opposed to just me talking in front of the camera. This is cool and all that and stuff, but like, I feel like everyone online is doing that stuff and that's just not me. Like if, if, you, if you're into videography, if you're into creative, being creative, this, that, and that, third, I think it's more, um, I think it's more beneficial if you know, if you see me in this action, perform these things and things of that nature and stuff. And also too, I want to let people know that creating could just be anything, right? Like. My friend had a fashion show. I attended, I brought my camera, made use of it. Like that's really important. So I feel like if you're gonna go out and shoot and you wanna learn how to do this and stuff. And had I not had my camera, I probably would have shot everything on my iPhone and then I would have colored, I would have probably color corrected a little bit as best I can within uh, Premiere and then upload and stuff. And I'm still working on my color correction because I'm not there yet. It's, just, it's a whole new process for me and stuff like that because like there's levels in which I'm trying to um, obtain. But then if to be quite honest with you, one of my aspirations, one of my goals is to build this out and then either outsource some of the back end work or just hire people. Yeah, outside the back end art and just pay people to like color for me and uh, edit. I've done it all though in the last three years. 
like don't get it twisted i've done like i've done the whole process i've shot stuff from improv i've shot things pre-planned and things of that nature it's just it's all time consuming and although i love the process and stuff i have bigger aspirations bigger dreams that i want to uh, accomplish and being bottlenecked and tied down to 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 doing every aspect of what's required is doesn't make any sense from a business perspective, right? Especially if I see myself uh, needing to like network more and being more um, in the in the public eye and whatnot. So, so that's like some of my mindset moving forward that I want I want to share with you know those of you who are interested in this line of work. Uh, I think it's very valuable because honestly, I see all the platforms. Um, move in this direction in terms of like creating video content and you as a creator being able to help people create those visions and stuff it's not going anywhere it's not going anywhere anytime soon so why not just take advantage of it or for those who are looking to do it yourselves and stuff know that you can do it yourself and if that's the only means you have trust me whether you make an investment on a camera or you make an investment on a high-end like iPhone camera or sensor, the technology that they put in these cameras, bro, I'm telling you, it's worth it. It's like you could really you could literally do everything yourself. So yeah, so um oh I also want to talk about this as well. Very important. So like whenever I go to a shoot and I'm just shooting for fun or I'm just like BSing or whatever. The one thing I always think about is the different frame rates I'm going to shoot in because that dictate that dictates certain decisions I have to make. Like if I'm in a low light situation, I'm probably going to shoot and I want to shoot high, high resolution. I'm probably going to shoot in a 4K 30 and I'm going to keep my movements tight to keep the camera still. If I don't have like my camera on the stabilizer reasons for that, because the reason for that is because I want to make sure that um, I can handle low light situations a little bit better, right? Cause then I can keep my shutter at one over 60 and I can, keep, I can keep things moving and whatnot. Like I would prefer to shoot at 60 frames per second, but then that change your shutter to one over 125 and in low light situations, you're gonna be have, you're gonna have to bump that ISO up. And in some some conditions with the footage, if, if, if your scene is not lit properly, and if you're doing run and gun shoots, trust me, it's, it's no bueno. Uh, you're gonna get a lot of grain in food. Uh, you're gonna get some grain in your footage and stuff. Now, for an event like that, a little bit of grain, it's okay, it's susceptible and stuff like that. But for high end productions or high end shoots, no, it's totally not acceptable. You should always try to create the best looking picture that you can. And uh, I guess that's the best way for me saying that. I don't know what I'm gonna be posting next. I might talk about some shoots that I've done in the past. I might put together um, a reel based on, well, so show you some content from what I've been working on with my boy Val. I don't know yet, still figuring out this uh, channel. So until next time, peace.